say goodbye But I can't seem to move away Not to say, not to say That you shouldn't share the blame There is a softness to your touch There is a wonder to your way
so I shut it all off.
You guys feel good? That's good, because we feel good too. Uh, there's a not, man named, it's not untrue. There's a man named Dave Cousin, and I'm shouting him out for this song. Uh, probably, probably, probably for him in a non-romantic way. But maybe in the most romantic way. I can't tell.
Hey, uh, first of all, thank you guys for doing this for us. We appreciate it. Much better than the morning, right? Early yeah. morning. Yeah. For sure. Like that. <laughs> so congrats on the uh, new album. Uh, sounds terrific. I, I laid down at home and just listened to it twice, you know, in full. There's a lot there, you know? There's a lot there. It's a lot. Um, I want to start with Dave. Oh, we should just make introductions really quick. So this is Dave on the end. We have Tunde, <laughs> Kip, and Jalil. But you guys, you guys know that. You guys know that. Um, so Dave, I want to start with you. Um, I was speaking with Karen O oh recently, who did a session for us. She played Crush Songs. And I asked her uh, how she met her, her band, um, who were with her in the session, uh, Moses Sumney and um, Holly Miranda. And she said that um, she met them at your house at a barbecue. That's and how we roll. <laughs> it gave me an appreciation of you as you know such a um, gravitational center and all around music man. You know, magnets. You you are. <laughs> you are. How the. And um, as a producer, you know, not only of TV on the radio, but a number of projects. I mean. Do you feel that way as far as being the, the gravitational uh, center of, of this band? No, not necessarily. I feel like um, the past few places that I've lived, it's, it's really just trying to get an unsupervised adulthood. I always explain to people, it's like when your parents left uh, out of town and you were 16, the first day that they were gone, that feeling when you felt like it was gonna last forever. I'm just perpetually in pursuit of that and I think <laughs> m most artists are in pursuit of that. And that's a fair assessment, right? Yeah. True. Not the day before they come back. I never <laughs> want, I don't want those vibes. I am fascinated with um, the fact that each of you are, are such creative individuals and have you know, seemingly um, hundreds of pursuits you know, even beyond the band. So, um, how do you reconcile that, you know, when you're working together on an album? You know, if you, if you all have these strong personalities and perspectives, is there, is there a key there? I think you take breaks. Yeah. Yeah, taking, yeah. <laughs> yeah, walk, walking away from any situation and kind of looking at it and seeing the best parts of it and deciding to kind of go with the best parts are, it's really, it's really key, but I think I don't know. I just feel like between the group of us, just with every successive record or tour, we kind of whatever language we've developed, we kind of get better at telepathically. I don't know. It's not always telepathically. What am I thinking right now, Dave? <laughs> I'd rather not say on KCRW. <laughs> the sad thing is, he's correct. <laughs> um, but just kind of like going back and forth, like it's it's just a lot easier like I'll, I'll write some kind of demo or something and I'll know who's gonna put what where or who I want to try what and the same thing with everyone else um, so it's usually I mean it's a it's a f someone you're describing as a flawed democracy no you I said that. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't turn away oh. yeah I mean that's the nature of democracy that it's flawed. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, uh, the idea is that it's self-correcting eventually. Especially when you put money in the mix. Yeah. Um, we have a lot of moneyed interest in our really band. Whoever yeah. wants to drop... Who <laughs> wants to drop that ton of money on us? Self-correct. <laughs> Great. Did you have a lot of material that you wrote for this album? Yeah, it was an enormous amount. A lot. <laughs> a lot, a lot. <laughs> was it a challenge to, to narrow that down? No, it was super easy. All the songs that were amazing, we just picked. <laughs> the rest of them. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of them are Took relegated for when we have a gambling addiction. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Guys, I need this. I need this. Please put everything out right now. I need this. I'm in the street wearing a barrel. Tunde, I read a um, quote which uh, 
you know, you said something like this album is the best that you've done, um, a thousand percent without a doubt, the best thing we've ever done. And um, that's a bold statement. And I also no such thing as a thousand percent. <laughs> <laughs> but it's printed everywhere now. It just made me curious. He actually said better than everyone else. Mark it up, yeah. <laughs> I actually said our band, I was quoting Run DMC, and I said, our band is better than all your bands. <laughs> it's not. It didn't happen. Um, I don't know. It's, it's the record that I've been, I don't know. I felt like it was really fun to make the record, and it's not always definable fun when we're making the record. Um, but this time it was very much a, I don't know, just, just kind of, I think, taking a break and coming back and just having a spirit of, first off, being able to work with your friends and, you know, in addition to that, you're doing something that you really like to do that, for some reason, everyone outside of the band, you know, a lot of people outside of the band care about, which is an extra tier that's more icing on a cake that probably shouldn't even exist, be that high. Um, so I don't know, I, at least for me, it was just kind of being really, really glad that we, we got to team up and fight crime <laughs> um, one more <laughs> another time and that it was, you know, it's just, it was, it was really pleasant, really pleasant to do, yeah. Uh, you know, you have uh, different disciplines. Uh, you're an animator, you're a director, a uh, visual artist. Um, did you do the art direction for, for Seeds? Um, I worked with Julian Gross, um, who um, was in the band Liars for a while, um, but he's just one of, my, one of my closest friends, but also one of the, the best artists that I know and designers. Um, so yeah, we went in pretty, pretty deep. We, the, the, it's the starting point was just to make it look like someone had left the thing on the planet and taken off. You know, just like an object that you find, and it's really, really alien. Not like E.T. alien, but just weird. <laughs> deep, deep, deep weird. And I think he nailed it. Will you be directing videos uh, as you did on, on Nine Types of Light? Maybe, probably small things. Um, that was a pretty big undertaking, and... Really, s really small videos that only play on your fingernail. That's true. <laughs> small projectors, yeah. Press on videos. <laughs> um, but I, we'll do. We're we're working on a bunch of stuff now that'll be, you know, really strong component of of just kind of the floating the record out on all that stuff. And Kip, what have you been up to? I'm s sitting here with you. <laughs> I've been working on a record with my friend Kelsey Lou McJunkins in New York when I'm not doing this. For actually, this is pretty immersive. <laughs> I'm working on a record with my friend Kiara called No Top Pools. I'm working with different friends, producing some stuff and doing some soundtrack stuff. Doing soundtrack stuff? So you're, you're scoring? I'm s totally scoring. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I knew that. <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> I am interested, though. Please expand on this. You're, you're scoring for film? Yeah, I, I, asked, I asked for that. I asked the ether for that, and then all these opportunities came. My How way. do you enjoy that? Is it, it must, I mean, it's a very different... It's very different, thing. super rewarding. It's uh, challenging in ways that, that this isn't. And um, and this is plenty challenging, but like this is it's a new <laughs> it's a new new challenge, and uh, I don't know. I'm excited to I'm excited to be somewhere and he hear it around other people and see it all sewn together. Is there anything you can um, divulge? I don't want to talk, talk about right okay, now. Okay, okay. <laughs> but uh, but I'll I'll yeah. text you as soon as. <laughs> 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 well, you know. That's, it's amazing that you're managing, you know, both, uh, you know, this. Am I? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're scoring. Yeah. You're scoring. Jaleel? Um, I prefer to remain an enigma. That's okay. He's very good at it. As you wish. <laughs> As you wish. Can, can I interrupt you for a second? And, and I want to give it up for Smuda. 
who's, who's playing with us tonight. And I, and I want to give it up for, for Jake Nager, who, who stepped in on drums uh, with us for this session. Because he's doing great. You know, I wanted to ask you about the, um, the kind of warm-up shows that you guys did recently. So you played um, Pappy and Harriet's, and then I think the Fonda mm -hmm. in LA, and also uh, you played with uh, Massive Attack in Santa Barbara. Um, how, how were those shows? They were great. <laughs> Why is, what happened? Because I just had a memory of, oh. uh, of, of having too much fun at all of those shows. Yeah. We also played in, in, there's a Northern California too, and we played <laughs> in, uh, in Big Sur at the Henry Miller Library, and it was incredible. It was incredible. And in San Francisco. In <laughs> San Francisco. I, w I wish I had gone also to the, San Francisco. the Pappy and Harriet's Pappy and Harriet's show. People uh, went wild at the Pappy and Harriet's really show. People really did. I was not. Like un I didn't know about that. Yeah. It Just got a little, yeah. A little bit something. Too much fun. Hey, so I want to ask you about um, a couple of songs specifically, and maybe you have um, some insight or a story. Um, in particular, um, the song "Could You." Um, which seemed really interesting to me because it, it just captures um, a lot of different energies that I think you guys represent. You know, it has some of these, like Dave's uh, signature horn sections, you know, stuff like that. That was actually Smuda and Todd Smuda Simon. And Todd Simon. Oh. Yeah. Whoops. Smuda and Todd Simon, give it up for them. Give it up, give it up for them, you can say it. Whether you've heard it or not. But, but Dave, it is true that you, you know, you always bring... I dabble in horns. You dabble in horns. I do. They forged his signature. <laughs> but, you know, oh. talk about that, talk about the song if you can. Um, anything come to mind in the, the writing or, you know, how it feels now? Um, it's easy to, to write songs of like uh, seduction, not easy, but like it comes like there's a lot of, there's a huge push to do that biologically. And then, <laughs> and then it's just as easy to write like uh, he, sh I, I, uh, he said, she said in a, you know, a woe is me song, but like, um, because that comes when you're trying to like process something. But uh, uh, I don't know. There's other. Just thinking about uh, looking at the self and figuring out how to not, not be a. Can it say dick? On the <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think, I think how so. How to yeah. not be a dick. <laughs> how to not be a dick. How not to be a dick to other people. How not to be a dick to yourself. And like. And uh, I hate to bring the body into it because I'm not against the body. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, we know what I mean when I say dick, I think. Um, uh, <laughs> that's what the song is about, is, is trying to, to um, I mean, because there's like, we say love all the time, and love is easy easy thing to like, to say I love you, but to show love to someone, it can be very challenging, and to show true, like real love to yourself, or other people is challenging, and that's, I don't know, it's just like writing a reminder to myself, so every time I have to play it, I have to think about not trying, trying to be better to people. <laughs> Try, I said trying. That's what he wants, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I got one more for you. Um, Laser Ray, which really jumped out as a jam <laughs> to me listening to the record. Um, any story about that song? Um, I woke up, I went to a coffee shop, I had a double espresso, and I came home and I wrote it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 <But> <laughs> But as it, um, I wrote a, I wrote a sketch for it, and then when I got out to Dave's place, um, just messing around with words, and 
in my mind, it's uh, it's a, um, a song about this is you know, sound ridiculous, whatever. Um, it's talking about staying in the moment, realizing that the moment um, could also be it's a well, it's just a, a pure beam of energy that shoots into the past and into the future and is not concerned or aware of time, and um, it's kind of like this too shall pass at hyperspeed. You know, it's just going and going and going. Um, yeah, it's about that, just that the that sort of energy. Um, it's not really concerned with temporal things. And it's a punk song. <laughs> it's punk song. That's, that's how I felt when I first heard punk rock. I was just like, come at me, whatever, I don't care. I don't care who you are. I think that's what, what grabbed me. I'm going to atomize you. Hey, well, why don't we get into your second set, shall we? Want to do that? Sounds like a plan. All right. Thank you again, TV on the radio, live at Apogee Studios for KCRW. Give it up.
you guys so much for coming out and being here with us. It makes a big difference. Sometimes you worry you're gonna be way too loud for a room like this. I don't care. You don't care. 
This guy doesn't care. She's got an awesome hat. She don't care. It's 
just to just to hide away from you all my ghosts came a calling making noises about a promise I had broken oh I'm gonna be lonely soon Yeah. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. Thank you, KCRW.